Hey guys, it's Chris at Highland Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned your subscription. And to everyone else who's watching, if you enjoy this video, be sure to click that thumbs up icon down below. It's a great way to show support without having to spend any money. And if you wouldn't mind spending a few bucks to help support the channel financially, you can visit my eGuitar Plans web store. There's a link in the description below. Or you can visit my Highline uh, merch store, which is also displayed down below the description for this video. Either way, whatever you purchase is going to help support the channel, plus you'll be getting something in return. So what I'm going to be talking about today is I wanted to address questions that seem to come up every time I level the frets on a guitar. And this may be videos where I have specifically focused on just leveling the frets and sometimes in other videos when I am doing a series for a guitar build, when I get to that point where I'm leveling the frets, I always get these questions about what is necessary. What are the tips and tricks or hacks that uh, allow you to level the frets on a guitar that has a compound radius fretboard. Now, for those of you who don't know what a compound radius fretboard is, it's a fretboard that has basically two different radii. At the nut, it's one radius, and at the heel, it's another. So, as an example, it might be, let's say, 10 inches at the nut, and then, say, 14 inches at the heel. As you move from the nut up the fretboard towards the heel, that radius will gradually transition from 10 inches to 14 inches. Now I have seen fretboards where that radius suddenly changes. It could be 14 inches all the way to like the 12th fret, and then it suddenly changes to 10 inches. But it's more common that that transition is gradual. It's also known as a conical fretboard because in truth, that's what it is. It's not a compound. Uh, yes, it's compound in that you're combining the two radiuses together, but it's more accurately described as conical. Anyway, most people will, dis will assume that you need to use special tools or techniques in order to level the frets on a guitar that has been made with a compound or conical radius fretboard. Well, if you do a search for fret leveling tools, you are not going to find any specialized tools that exist for doing that sort of work. It simply doesn't, uh, it's not an issue. There, there are no special tools required. When I level the frets on a compound or conical radius fretboard, I'm just using my traditional fret leveling beams. And the reason for that is the surface that you apply sandpaper to for the purpose of leveling is pretty narrow. It's about an inch wide. And as you move it along the fretboard, assuming that the frets have been installed correctly, it's going to follow that radius as the, the beam moves down the fretboard. Now, when I say properly installed, it starts out with a uh, fretboard that has been radiused correctly. So you would have your compound radius precisely sanded into the fretboard. Then when the frets are pressed or tapped into position, the fret wire is going to assume the radius in that spot. So your frets at one end would be, say, 14 inches, and then they would gradually transition towards the first fret, which would be 10 inches in radius. So when you place the beam onto the surface and start to level, your leveling beam is going to automatically assume that radius. And that's why you don't need to use a specialized tool. Now, in some other videos, I've mentioned using a radius sanding block for radiusing the frets. I'll do that, but only if the radius is consistent from one end to the other. So if I had a 12 inch radius, I would use a 12 inch radius sanding block, but that's not gonna work on a compound radius fretboard. You might think, that you could use a 14 inch radius block at this end and then a 10 inch radius at this end. No, it doesn't work. You're not gonna end up with level frets if you do that. 
you have to use the narrower uh, leveling beam in order to, uh, to accomplish this. Now, normally when you're using a tool like this to level frets on a neck that has a consistent radius, you want to move the beam back and forth so that it remains parallel, the edge remains parallel with the center line of the neck. And that's going to achieve a precisely leveled frets while maintaining whatever the radius of the fretboard is. What you can do with a compound radius fretboard is instead of following that center line, is you can follow the taper of your fretboard with this edge. So you would actually be going at a slight angle. That's going to automatically generate a compound, uh, a level compound surface in your frets. I have a feeling I'm going to get some questions from viewers who are going to want to know how do you level the frets on a guitar that's a multi-scale instrument? In other words, fan frets. The technique is exactly the same as if you were leveling frets on either a consistent radius or a compound radius. Same tools, same techniques. Even though the frets are fanned out and at, are at weird angles to one another, they still have to be level with respect to each other. So the angle of the frets doesn't matter. It's the same uh, approach, the same tools and the same techniques. So to answer that question, how do you level the frets on a compound fretboard? The same way you level frets on a fretboard that is a consistent radius. There's no specialized tools. There are no specialized techniques other than to perhaps follow the taper. But even that isn't absolutely necessary. Um, you can still level your frets with a compound radius if you follow the center line. So you don't really need to modify your technique or go out and buy some expensive exotic tool that you're only going to use on a compound radius fretboard. So I hope that answers that question. I plan to use this video whenever someone asks that question about leveling frets on a compound fretboard. I'm just going to simply send them the link to this video and hopefully that will suffice in explaining uh, what is necessary for doing that. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, visit the eGuitar Plans web store or the Highline Guitars merch store down below. And I hope that you'll be back for future episodes. So take care and stay safe.